All right, my name is John Garfield. This is the Releasing Kings newsletter. It's um, June 12th, 2016. <laughs> this week I want to talk to you about how dreams are connected to uh, opportunities. Opportunities come in three varieties. One is the opportunities that facilitate our dream. Two is opportunities that don't seem to lead us to our dream. And number three is um, disasters or misfortunes that seem to totally derail our dream and leave us hopeless. Uh, having a long-term dream doesn't compete with near-term opportunities. It complements finding them. Our dream is the lens to discern whether an opportunity will lead us toward our destiny or not. The reality of pursuing the lifelong dream God wrote in our heart is that there are many ways to get there and many opportunities along the way. Discerning life's opportunities is, is usually more wisdom than revelation. God expects a, our own dream to own our own dream and to own the path to get there. The definition of a poverty mentality is the inability to see opportunities. Having a dream helps us to see those opportunities. So let's talk about the three types. First one is great opportunities. <laughs> Quite often we have to choose between two good opportunities. The decision might be difficult, but the reality is that both paths probably lead to the same place, same destiny, or same dream. Not to worry. The second one is wrong opportunities. Uh, at other times, we may face a good opportunity that it doesn't lead us toward our dream, or our dream may not be formed in our hearts well enough to guide the selection of an opportunity. There's nothing wrong with taking a good opportunity while our dream is in the formative stage. When the opportunity is just a garden variety temptation that takes us away from our assignment, then we can just pass. Let's talk about misfortunes. Uh, or, or bad opportunities. <laughs> These are fairly common, actually, especially for believers. Misfortunes are more nightmares than opportunities, leaving us believing that our dream will never come true. It takes a resurrection to recover. The reality is that the experience of resurrection is part of experiencing Jesus. The maturity that comes from the cycle of death and resurrection leaves the fragrance of humility and brokenness that is the foundation for trusting our Father and having faith to get through any battle. Misfortunes for Christians are resurrected in some, into some of our best opportunities. Although we might never choose them, God might never choose them for us, it still happens. It's just that we serve a God that can raise us up from the dead. <laughs> the the uh, fourth one I want to add is making opportunities. We often regard opportunities as something that comes to us or happens to us or, you know, luck, if you will. And often they do. However, opportunities in the kingdom are also made. God expects us to ask and seek and knock. Initiative is the trademark characteristic of believers who inherit the land God has for them. They have a dream and they make it come true by seizing opportunities and creating opportunities. We are overcomers because we know how to navigate resistance and warfare. You will not inherit your dream any other way. The enemy will fight you over the dream that God wrote in your heart more than any area. Listen to Numbers 13.30. Uh, Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of our land, for we can certainly do it. Listen to Deuteronomy 11.23. The Lord will drive out all of these nations before you, and you will dispossess nations larger and stronger than you. Every place where you set your foot will be yours. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, from the Euphrates River to the Western Sea. No man will be able to stand against you. That's the power of a dream. And uh, listen to what uh, Moses said to Joshua in uh, Joshua 1 verse 3. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert of Lebanon to the, from the great river to, to the Euphrates. And onto the last phrase it says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So the fact is that we have to be, take the initiative to step into our land and inherit it. That, that initiative is part of what's involved in being kingdom and inheriting your mountain. So the fact is, dreams do come true. Without a dream, we're left to taking the best opportunities and trying to get excited about the process. Sometimes that will lead to a dream. People have taken that route, not knowing with clarity what their dream is and just going through life and eventually discovering it. 
So we're not afraid to take good opportunities. Um, sometimes they lead to a dream and sometimes not. The reality is that those who seek God find Him. Those who ask the key questions of life get answers. And those are, who am I? Uh, why am I here? And what's in my future? And they have to do with what's my identity, what's my dream, and what's my destiny. And uh, the, the, the basis for asking those questions is knowing that God does have the answers. And they're already written in our book. Uh, listen to uh, Psalm 139, verse 16. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book. In other words, you and I have a book with the destiny in it. That doesn't mean we we're predestined. It, it just means God's going to give us opportunities that lead toward a destination, and we have to choose them. We have to go out and fight for them and work for them. So our identity is shaped around the fact that we are like our father. Jesus told the Pharisees that they were like their father, the devil. <laughs> the same is true for us. It's in our spiritual DNA to be like Jesus. We naturally gravitate toward the dream God wrote in our heart and have passion for our mountain. We naturally carry a sense of destiny, creativity, and power and love that sets people free. It sets us free to, to do what God has put in our heart. So we're not mercenaries. We're warring at our own expense. God provides us with the anointing, the authority, and the provisions to fulfill our dream. Uh, it's His dream too. Often we have the sense that Lord, I really want this, but it feels like you're not supporting me. And actually, he's more in favor of your dream than you and I are. So we expect opportunities to arise. We expect to resurrect from defeat. Uh, we expect our Father to help us finish victoriously. And believers always float to the surface after shipwrecks. <laughs> it's normal to be the head and not the tail. God blesses and promotes us so that we're in positions to bless nations, not just survive. And we have to believe that. We have to understand that uh, God gave us a big dream for a big reason. And it's very central to how the kingdom works. Uh, the kingdom is built on individual dreams. So our personal dreams are always smaller than the one God has in mind for us. He's just that good. He's just that far ahead of us. And he just loves us that much. Listen to uh, Philippians 1.4. I always pray with joy, being confident in this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is work within us. Now, let me close with this thought. I think it's important that if Jesus asks us to do something, we're willing to obey and do what we're told, okay? Don't get me wrong. I'm not opposed to obedience. But obedience does not define the kingdom. You and I have to seek God for a dream, own it, and pursue it, and be willing to take initiative to inherit the land that God gave us. It's exciting. That's what makes life fun and fulfilling and adventurous, and that's the key to the kingdom. That's the key for you to be involved in your mountain and to open a door into what is going to be thrilling for your heart, um, no matter what the cost. Have a great week. God bless.